Greetings everyone, Tim Anderson here, aka Renfail, and welcome to the latest episode in my ongoing series reviewing the different games that I enjoy and play quite frequently, as opposed to only games that are new and fresh. I play a lot of different games, and I like to talk about those games, whether or not they're worth it, pros and cons, so on and so forth. And today we are diving into Star Wars The Old Republic, a game that I have played pretty much every single year since it launched, and we're going to be talking about the state of the game in 2021, whether or not I think it's worth it, so on and so forth. Before we dive in, if you haven't already done so, make sure to subscribe to this channel, hit the bell icon, give it a like, leave a comment below. All of those things help the algorithm, and they help me know that this is the type of content that you want to see and you want more of. So all those things are great things to do, so I appreciate your help on those regards. Thanks so much. Let's dive into this episode. So, I have pretty much always played this game on a subscription. There have been a few times, I think maybe three, where I've come in and I've only played for like a month and I don't pay a subscription when I just come in and, and play it for a few weeks. But generally speaking, when I come in and play this game, I will come in for three to six months to catch up on all of the most recent expansion contents and, and DLCs and all those things and so I'll usually come in and drop a three month sub and if I haven't cleared through all the content in three months I will then do another three month sub and I don't think I've actually ever made it to six months in one go I think usually I end up wrapping up around the fourth and fifth month but I don't have a problem paying for those subs because when you do them in three month blocks they're fairly affordable you get uh, cartel coins every single month as a result of paying those monthly subscriptions you get rest I XP all these other fun perks I think it's worth it to me because typically when I jump in and play this game I'm playing it for prolonged chunks and it's worth it the game has evolved a lot since it first came out when this game first launched it was a group heavy group based game um, you pretty much needed a group to do almost, uh, yeah, I would say half the game. Half of the game's content was flashpoints or the um, group instances, excuse me, group dungeons on the planets. And if you remember, for those of you who played at launch, like that very first flashpoint, when you get off your starting planet and you have to go to Coruscant, and you have to do, I think it's called the Essels, is the name of that ship. It's been a while since I've done a new character. Um, but when the game first launched, you had no option. You had to do that with a group. So when you first got off your planet, you would get there to the space station, and then you would be waiting for a group to jump in and do the Essels, and then you could get off through that flashpoint and get onto Coruscant. And since then, they have made all of the flashpoints optional in the sense that um, you could choose to skip them entirely, or you can do them with a group, or you can do them with a uh, an NPC, this robot who comes in and basically is a super tank, super healer, and it allows you to go through and do the flashpoints in kind of a story mode, where you're never in any real danger of, of dying, but you still get to experience the story of the game um, as it was you know, written and designed. Not necessarily as it was intended to be played, but at least you can experience it and, and have fun that way. I would not classify Star Wars Old Republic as an MMORPG anymore. And I, it hasn't been, in my opinion, since it went free-to-play and they removed all of the mandatory grouping and pretty much made it a single-player RPG. Now, that being said, it's not a negative point against the game in any way. I love this game. It's Bioware at its peak, in my opinion, in the sense that it's got great storylines, um, voice acting, good cutscenes, and it's just a hell of a lot of fun if you're looking to sort of immerse yourself in that Star Wars classical experience. And if you like good story, um, we were talking about this the other night recording uh, with Ash and Phoenix on the most recent Mondays in MMORPG episode. We were talking about the Knights of the Eternal Empire, or Knights of the Fallen Empire, I think, are the most... Those are the two expansions from like 17, 18, 19, somewhere around in there. The most recent one, of course, which is Onslaught, which I have yet to play. Um, I'm currently, for the first time, this is my catch-up. So 
I haven't played in a bit, so I'm jumping in and actually working through the most recent content here in 2021, getting caught up with the Onslaught expansion. Um, but looking back at Knights of the Empire, those two expansions back to back, um, Ashton Phoenix was saying for him that was like the pinnacle of like Mandalorian War type, you know, Star Wars experience. But I actually enjoy. He's not wrong that those are great expansions. Um, but I think for me, the best experience for me is still going to be the classic leveling in the original base game, which you can still do to this day, which basically you've got your archetypes for each side, whether you're a public or Sith, and you've got these class storylines for like the smuggler or the commando or the Jedi Knight, uh, Jedi Guardian. Um, and each one of those, you've got a handful of archetypes on each side. And I don't know the actual length for all of the different um, classes, but I know having gone through, I think, five of them now over the years, um, you get about 40 hours of gameplay out of each class storyline in that base game. And they're unique to each individual class, which is a lot of fun because it gives you the opportunity. To, it's, it's like playing a different game every time you play. If you do it that way, even though it's slightly different mechanics when you come in and you're playing a different class. But like the the the, the smuggler storyline, as an example, on the Republic side, very well done. So much fun. Very, very different than the bounty hunter storyline, which is on the Sith side um, or the Empire side. And because you're getting different experiences out of each one of those things, you are going to the same planets. But this is one of the ways where the game has changed over the years. Because it used to be when you leveled a character, um, whether it was good or bad, good or evil, um, when you went to a planet, you had to do the planet quests, the optional quests, the flashpoints, and your class quests in order to stay on top of your levels in order to keep your levels high enough to be able to do the class quests and keep progressing through your class quests you had to do everything now they've streamlined the game and just changed it in such a way that you can only do your class quest for any of those archetypes and you'll get your 40 hours of enjoyment out of that base game and then you'll get to the end of that and you'll get into the expansion content and once you get into the expansion content, that's when they started focusing on it's just one storyline for all of the different classes. Whereas in the base game, you had all the different you know archetypes who all kind of met up at the end of that first game, and you were all you know the singular. I don't want to say hero, but you all had the hero arc, and you would end up here um, at the end of the storyline, and then. The expansions all pick up from that one singular point, and regardless of, it doesn't matter which class you've played by then, you just go off and you continue your adventures, uh, whether you're Sith or Republic, or Empire Republic, whatever the case may be. So from a storyline perspective, fully voiced, great cutscenes, a lot of fun. This is a great game if you like stories, so if you're a fan of Bioware's previous works, Star Wars of Republic is a great game, and in 2021, it's just as good as it's ever been. Some people will say, oh, it's starting to look a little dated. Eh. It's, it's an older game, yes, but at the same time, it's not that old. I think it's <clears throat> around 10 years old right now. I think it came out in 2011, I want to think. So it's right around 10 years old. And sure, some aspects of it look a little dated, but if you like the Clone Wars and you like... You know, watching all the, the fun Star Wars stuff that Disney Plus is putting out um, right now um, on the anime front. This is going to be no different. It's just another avenue to enjoy good Star Wars content. I don't really have any negatives about this game. Um, like I said, it's been a staple in my inventory over the past 10 years since it launched. I play it. Not, it's not necessarily every single year. It's usually once a year. But there have been a couple times where I've done like I think an extra few month gap, and I've done it like maybe in 18 months. Um, but for the most part, it's been pretty much every year I come in and play for a few months, get up to date on most recent expansion content, and continue the adventures with my main character, who is a Jedi Knight, Jedi Guardian, tank character. Um, 
this is another one of those areas where things have changed over the years because I can remember back in the in the old days, um, your companions had different classes and you had to go out and get gear for those companions and gear them up just like you did your main character. And nowadays, you can kind of switch. Um, that companion can be a tank, it can be a DPS, they can be a healer, whatever you need them to be. So it really counters whatever you've got going through and so you can pick and choose your your main companion to go through the game with. But overall, this is a really easy game to jump into because it's free to play. And even if you don't want to um, pick up a subscription, you know, there are perks to the subscription, which I'm going to be talking about that in a separate video. I'm going to be doing a um, subscription versus free to play video and talk about the pros and cons of each one of those. But even if you don't pick up a subscription, it's a really easy game to get into. There aren't a lot of roadblocks. In terms of progression, you could just jump in the game and you can take your character from one to max, go through the entire storyline for your given class. There's really no roadblocks in place for doing the free-to-play version, in my opinion. Obviously, everybody's got their opinion. And if you love Star Wars, I think this is a great game to try. I know it came out on Steam, I think, last year. It might have been... It's been recently that it came out on Steam for the first time, and I know for a lot of people that was a big thing. Like, oh, I can, I'll finally do it because I only play games through Steam. Um, but I've, I've had this game since the very beginning. Worth it. I love it. I hope you guys will jump into it as well. Check it out. Let me know what you think. If you've already played it before and there are things that have changed that you like or don't like, let me know in the comments below because I'd love to talk about those things in an upcoming video that I'm going to be doing when I do a pros and cons video. And I am playing it right now. I'm streaming it once in a while. Um, I've also got a lot of other things on my plate throughout the month of May because we've got Mass Effect Legendary Edition dropping and then Celeste at the end of the month that I'm still playing Lord of the Rings online. But I thought I would throw a little bit of uh, Star Wars Yield Republic in the mix and dance around with my lightsaber a little bit because their social media has been reminding me that I have that I need to get up to speed with the onslaught so I was like ah, there's no time like the present so um, thanks everybody don't forget to subscribe to the channel hit the bell icon uh, so you get updates on all future content let me know what you think in the comments below like the video share the video out don't forget to check the links below join us in discord Pick us up, pick up a subscription at Patreon if you'd like. It's three bucks a month for the most basic one, which is a great way to buy me a cup of coffee and support what I do here on YouTube. And of course, I will see everybody in the next episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you next time.